Hey everybody, welcome to our November meal prep. We're so happy that you joined us this month. Um, we decided that, my name's Diane Davis, and we decided this month that we are going to focus on gratitude and thankfulness. So hopefully we're gonna give you some healthy um, versions of some recipes that you can add to your Thanksgiving meal this Thursday. If not, you can incorporate them to any meal because they're just um, healthy recipes. So they don't have to be just for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to talk just briefly. I don't know if any of you all are aware that um, I have been in the fitness industry and um, teaching for over 25 years. And the month I teach spin mostly, and I'm a health coach and personal trainer, as most of us are on this call, um, as far as health coaching. But um, the month of November, I focus a lot of my rides on gratitude and thankfulness. And so I just kind of want to touch on it because we decided that this month we would have this be our theme. And so um, I'd like to focus on the word lean. And if you'll go with me on that, think of lifestyle, exercise, attitude, and nutrition. And that pretty much goes with what we all, I think, believe in encompass of what we're trying to do with our monthly meal prep. Um, we work on our lifestyle. Um, of course, we are throw in exercise being an important part of it. And your attitude and your mindset um, how you begin every day starts the day. And I always used to tell my kids what you think about, you bring about. So if you don't start the day off with that mindset, then your day either goes up or down. Um, and then nutrition. And so we always talk about the importance of whole food and how we get it in and how we can find ways to replace things that are not good for us with things that are a little bit better for us. So um, there is a book I'm gonna challenge you all to get we're stocking stuffer. Um, it is called Leave a Mark. It's by Mark Tidwell. And if you haven't heard of it, it's like a hundred page book. But um, the preference is to be intentional, to be impact, to be impactful, to be intentional, and to be an influence. And so I feel like those three things kind of encompass that word lean. And when I think about it, I think about, you know, how are we impactful? We're impactful. Um, with our lifestyle, because, you know, life is full of beauty and it's full of charm. It's full of adventure and we need to notice it. We need to balance our life, whether we're balancing it with work, with what we eat, how we sleep, um, all areas of our lives, and then how, um, how we are with our words. And um, I always say you've got to be impeccable with your words because once they're out, there's no taking them back. So um, we choose positive influences. We look for the best in others. Um, we show compassion. We learn to forgive ourselves as well as others. So that's our impactful and our lifestyle, if you will. Um, if you go with me on um, intentional, it's how um, our attitude affects what we do. And our limited, our, our possibilities of this life are infinite. And so to accomplish everything, we have to have courage. So my challenge for this month of November is perseverance, um, dedication, humility, and unconditional love, especially in this, as we're entering this season of December. So um, I always say, be the wish you wanna change, try to be an influence to those that you have the privilege of serving and being around. Be intentional with your actions to leave a mark in this world and um, be an influence and make an impact to the best of your ability. So I, um, I've got a little thing that if you all wanna get it, it's a fun little acronym thing. For some reason, I'm kind of hooked on these acronyms this month, but um, um, for November, the word blessings. And so my gratitude and thankful thing I'm gonna leave you with is for blessings is be present let the day flow with grace, expect nothing, give thanks, surrender, be open, speak only kindness, impart only love, never forget you're not alone, give so that you may receive and see goodness in others. So that's kind of my thing. And then I think we were gonna talk about our favorite Bible verse and I end every morning with Psalms 118.24. And um, I'm just going to leave it with you before I tell you about I'm cooked. And it's, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because you never know what the day is. 
So I'm going to challenge you all to be impactful, intentional, and influential, and to remember to be impeccable with your words. So there's my gratitude and thankfulness of the day and of the month. So now I'm going to tell you that I probably got the easy end of the deal and made the easiest recipe that there ever is. It is so delicious and our family can't wait to eat it tonight, but it is roasted Brussels sprouts, cinnamon butternut squash with pecans and cranberries. So I went ahead, the recipe, all you have to do is roast the Brussels sprouts. You roast the butternut squash with a little bit of olive oil and cinnamon and the Brussels sprouts, you roasted with a little bit of olive oil and sea salt. So they both were roasted for about 20 minutes. I went ahead and did that. And then the pecans you put in the oven at like 350 till they got a little brown. And then that was like five or six minutes. And then I'm gonna show you, all you do is dump it all and throw cranberries in it. And that is the recipe. So hang on, I'm still on crutches. So I have a scooter. So you're gonna scoot with me to the, to the oven. So hold on one second. I don't have any children here helping me tonight. So, can you guys see these? Yes. Yeah. So that's all they are, is I chopped up the butternut squash. And then can you see the uh, Brussels sprouts? I'm coming back over, hang on. I'm trying to do the reach. The good thing, this isn't professionally televised. Um, so Brussels sprouts are right here. I don't know if you can see, I can't see myself. I'm seeing you, Mimi, not me. Um, and then all I'm doing is putting them in one bowl and I'm gonna toss them together because the butternut squash already has the little bit of cinnamon with the olive oil. So, and I forgot to tell you, with the butternut squash, it has two tablespoons of maple syrup. So it gives it that little bit of sweetness. So you really don't need, if the recipe says if you wanna make it sweeter, you could add more um, maple syrup. I'm not, but you could, um, just if you wanted to make it a little bit sweeter. Um, but the color is beautiful between the orange and the Brussels sprouts and then the, um, dried um, cranberries. And then I'm just putting in the pecans. So if you can see the finished product, I'll toss it up. It looks beautiful, it smells beautiful. Let me show you, I gotta scoot over to the camera. Can y'all see it? Oh, that looks so good. And you guys, Besides just the cutting, I bought the butternut squash already cubed, but I had to cut the Brussels, but all, all of that was literally 20 minutes in the oven and I just tossed it with you. So it's a nothing. So I'm sure the next recipe to come is a little bit harder. I think we're on to um, Jen. Hello. So um, gosh, today was one of those days that I typically start off my day working out early in the morning. Did not do that because getting ready for family to come. So it was like laundry and all these things, just getting my day going, trying to get it all done. Didn't get to the gym until almost one o'clock. Didn't get to the grocery store until 2.30. <laughs> so I'm not as put together as I normally would be, but the food is, is in the works. Um, the two things that I'm making today are um, uh, sauteed green beans gremolata. It's an Ina Garden recipe. If anyone doesn't know Ina Garden, Barefoot Contessa, I love her recipes. They're not always the healthiest, but I chose one that is. <laughs> so this is basically sauteed green beans with the gremolata, which I get to show you. That's the part. So the green beans are now, I'm just going to kind of take you over to the, um, to the stove top so you can see. And let's see if I can... Can I flip my camera? Can I flip my camera on Zoom? Is that possible? Switch camera. Is that it? Ooh, look at that. You learn something new every day. Okay, so I've got the green bean sauteing. All right, and so what I did, originally what I did was I just blanched them. Okay, so when you blanch, 
you're basically throwing your um, you're throwing your your vegetables into water for a very short amount of time. So you're getting them um, just lightly cooked, okay? And so now I'm finished sauteing and I just want you to see it's really, really simple, done, okay? Now I'm going to go over to my, back to my counter so I can show you. That's done, okay, so a little disorganized today. All right, so what I did was I blanched. Then as soon as the blanching was done, it was about two to three minutes blanching. Then I tossed the, the um, green beans into very cold water with ice. So that will stop the process of cooking, okay? So it, was, it sat in the cold water until it was time for me to saute. Then I drained and I just patted them dry and then sauteed them with a little fresh olive oil, okay? So that's done, that's it. Now I'm gonna bring these over. They're gonna go into my pan or to my, my bowl, and I'll show you because it's kind of hard to see. All right, so they're in the bowl, okay? Super simple. Now, this is the best part. Okay, green beans, done. But you can also do this with broccoli. I think it would be delicious. So this is the gremolata. Can you see that? Okay, so what this is, is flat leaf, par leaf parsley, Parmesan cheese, some roasted pine nuts, minced garlic, and lemon zest. That's it. So just imagine, so I'm gonna put this into the green beans and I'm gonna to toss it. And that's done. Super simple, lots of flavor. And I'll just show you the finished product when it's done. All right, let me just flip my camera. See? Finished. Can you see it? Beautiful, and it that's a pretty bowl too. <laughs> Thank you. I bought this bowl. One second. I bought this bowl. We went to the Hamptons years ago when Doug's sister lived there. She had a summer home there. This bowl will go to my grave with me. <laughs> it was so ridiculously expensive. It was you know like an art piece. This was like we only had one child at the time, so I'm like, do not ship this bowl. Um, anyway, so I wanted to show you a couple things. So one zester, okay? I know I've shown this on another um, meal prep, but this thing is the bomb. This is called a microplane. If you don't have one, please buy yourself one. It makes this thing so, so simple, okay? And then Christmas. Christmas is coming. Have you ever seen these knives? These are global knives. So when I um, met my husband, Doug, who is a former chef, you know, I had knives. I didn't know. I just cut. I never even thought about it. And he's like, oh, well, you've got to get these global knives. So these global knives are Japanese knives. It's all one piece of stainless steel. So it's like he said, it never, this will never separate. And they just chop like nobody's business. So if you need to give a gift, there's, you know, every size imaginable, but we have, this is my favorite chopping knife. Okay. Now, oh, there you go. Look at that. I love, is that, is that like a paring knife? Very good. I love that. Those are so great. Okay, so this is the gremolata. This is going with our dinner tonight. We're making pompano, which is a fish that is not on the market yet. Um, my husband is working on that because he's a seafood importer, but it is a white flaky fish. It's so delicious. It would be more like, I guess, like a flounder or a yellowtail. Super, super sweet and very flaky. Now, the next thing that I'm making is rosemary garlic smashed potatoes. Because we all know mashed potatoes are so good for the holidays, but they typically have dairy and butter, lots of sodium. So if we're trying to kind of go into some more healthy options, I thought this would be a really great one. Um, so I'll tell you what I did because I'm just in the process of putting them in the oven. So the first thing I did was just for 15 to 20 minutes, I, um, I boiled the potatoes. I did organic red potatoes. You could do, um, like a Yukon gold. No, not the Yukon gold. What's the, the little yellow ones? I can't remember the names of those. So there's, there's smaller potatoes. Okay. So I've done those. And now the smashing, I just want to show you what the simple way to smash. Okay, so you see that, right? 
I'm gonna go get my book. All right, let's see. I, I win the award for be officially being the most unorganized today. All right, wait a second. Okay, there we go, there we go. All right, so smashing. Where am I? See the small glass. It's the simple way, simplest way. So let's see if I can look and smash at the same time. The key is to not squish too much down. You just wanna smash it just a little bit like that, okay? Then I'm gonna do all of them. I'm gonna put them in the oven and they, they cook for about 30 minutes in the oven. They get really crispy. Um, what I do to make them even crispier is I spray a little bit of um, just cooking spray on it. We use organic olive oil cooking spray and then it gets it really crispy. And then you'll toss it at the end, you'll toss it with the fresh garlic, a little bit of Parmesan cheese and um, the fresh rosemary, super simple. We were in, um, we went to um, Aspen and there, if you ever go, there's a restaurant called the Meat and Cheese Shop. They have the best um, smashed potatoes ever. And so I was like, I'm gonna recreate that. This is the recipe. So. If you have never tried them before, I would say definitely get the recipe from us and try them. They're super yummy. So, okay, so that's all I have for you guys. I did want to talk about gratitude and I'm going to put myself, everybody's probably feeling drunk now by the time I finish with this stupid thing. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, gratitude. Just coming to gratitude in the, maybe a time where you're feeling stressed, it is a practice. But when you're going through that moment, try your best to think of something that you're grateful for in that moment. It could be something super simple and it is a practice, but as you get over time, you start being more intentional about it, you will find that in a situation, you just can handle it better. And I just wanted to read a couple of things that actually have been proven because I always go back to science what gratitude actually does for us, okay? Number one, I think we all know when we find great gratitude for people, it just helps improve our relationships. Then it improves our physical health. So there was a study that was done and showed that grateful people are more likely to care about their health, their, let's say their exercise more often and more likely to attend regular checkups. So I think, again, it's just a mindset. And if you have that mindset, there's oftentimes other things that go with it, right? Improves psychological health. There, let's see, there was this other study. What was the one that I'd read? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Enhances empathy and reduces aggression helps you sleep better. So this is one, I, if you don't do this, consider doing it at night, having a gratitude journal and just writing a few things for that day that you were grateful for. And it helps set your mind, put you into the more of the parasympathetic nervous system, helps you feel more calm and you may sleep better. So that is something to try if you have issues with sleeping. Improves self-esteem, increases mental strength, and that's, that's it. But I do have a really great um, quote. It isn't from the Bible, but it is a quote that it just spoke to me about gratitude. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. And that's my quote for gratitude. I love that. And I love the smashed potatoes. <laughs> I know. I hope I was maybe by the time you're finished, Mimi, maybe I can show a little bit more okay. of it. But that's it's pretty simple. But once you read the recipe, I think it's pretty simple to follow. Yeah. And with garlic and um, olive oil, you can't go wrong, right? No. Um, well, so um, thank you, Jen. And I love the way. Diane, your gratitude things really flowed into Jen's. Now mine are going to be kind of funny, but um, it's that'll be last. So I was with my daughter this weekend, and last night I did my cooking. Um, she's texting me right now. Can I get on? <laughs> 
But anyway, um, I'm going to show you, I did two influencer recipes and um, that's just because those are the ones I decided were great. The first one I'm going to show you is called apple cranberry holiday stuffing. A little different than the traditional stuffing. I got to tell you, it is amazing. And I used some of my Tower Garden parsley or actually my daughter's Tower Garden parsley and some rosemary and there are a few other um, herbs. It says to use poultry seasoning. I kind of know what that is. I didn't have that actual, you know, spice bottle. So I did thyme and sage and rosemary and parsley. And um, it really was great. It's the kitchen, you know, when you're cooking something like, well, like the turkey, but that's that stuffing smell comes out. Um, so I'm gonna show you, cause I just took it out of the oven actually while Jen was talking. And um, here is, and up close of it. Can you see there's cranberries in there? I'm gonna give you the recipe of what's in there. But I baked it, cause you mix it up and then you bake it, but I'll, I'm gonna put it in the freezer until Thursday. But here's what's in it. Avocado oil, um, an onion chopped up fine, two st stalks of celery, butternut squash or any squash, it says three cloves of garlic, poultry seasoning, I told you what mine was, fresh chopped rosemary, tarragon, um, a cup of dried cranberries, three Granny Smith apples peeled and cubed in salt and peppered. How about that? And basically that's it. You mix all that up and you put it in the oven and you bake it for 20 minutes. And that's what I just did. Oh, and it has, um, you can do chicken broth or veg broth, either one um, for the liquid part. And I used these bread, I used breadcrumbs. I didn't make my own, but I used, um, do you all know, Bowdoin sourdough, that brand, B-O-U-D-I-N, Bowdoin sourdough. They make a fabulous stuffing mix that's kind of got, already has some herbs in it. And so um, I, I got it at Natural Grocers. I'm sure you can find it other places. And I, um, I, I got two bags because this one was just one bag. And so I'll probably make another more traditional stuffing. So we'll have both of those. So that is my um, dish and it too, it wasn't complicated. It, it just, you know, a little bit of time to chop and peel and do all that. And now this is mine that I'm most excited to show you is I made this pie. Can you guys see the pie pretty well? So um, I haven't sliced it yet and you don't bake it. It's a, one of those refrigerator pies and it's basically a chocolate pie. I used pumpkin puree you can use acorn squash too. And I learned something you make, what sweetens it is date paste. Does anybody use date paste before or know what that is? I didn't either. So all it is, is about, well, a bag, which is 12 ounces of dates and you soak it in a bowl with water. It says overnight or several hours. Mine was like three hours on the countertop. And then I just drained off most of the water, threw it in my food processor, that's date paste. That's it. Dates and water. And that's the sweetener. So these ingredients, it blew my mind how easy it was. I used canned organic pumpkin, the date paste that I made on the fly, and um, some almond milk, vanilla, and what was that? I've got the, I'll share the recipe. There's one more thing, but I can't remember at the moment. That might have been it. I did not make the crust. I found this gluten-free graham cracker crust at uh, Natural Grocers, but um, you know you can make the crust, and there's a recipe for the crust in the recipe. But that shortened it, and then I just sprinkled the pecans on top. So um, I, I I have not eaten it yet. So I've told I made two. I left one with my daughter and son-in-law, and I said, think of it as a chocolate pumpkin pie maybe not so much a chocolate pie because you put it all in the food processor and it gets really smooth and silky. Um, I love to play with recipes. If I were to make it again, I probably will. I'd probably add like some dairy-free cream cheese or something that makes it even creamier and silkier. I don't know. I, I just like, oh, cocoa powder. That's what I forgot to tell you. It's what made it chocolate. It's cocoa powder. I got um, some dark organic cocoa powder and just put it all in the food processor. And that's how I made the pot. So, and I'll, and we're going to send all these recipes out. Okay. So the final, final thing is, um, I love Diane, you're intentional and, and, uh, make your mark and, um, 
what you speak, you bring about. Did I say that right? Um, what you speak about, you bring about. Is that right? Is that, did I say that right? I tried to take notes, but I don't know that my notes were what, what you think about, you bring about. What you think about, you bring about. Okay. I'm going to add to that what you speak about, you bring about. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so my um, my gratitude thing is, and I did not come up with this. I saw it somewhere on on social media. Was um, and I actually got this pumpkin at Halloween. It's a white pumpkin, and I put a sharpie next to it. And I told my family and everybody that walks in the door, they have to write something they're grateful for on the pumpkin. And so we'll finish it off at Thanksgiving. And pumpkin's in pretty good shape, actually. I don't know if you guys can see really well. But there's quite a few things on here that you might not have thought of yourself, or um, I wouldn't have. Um, one of my friends walked in the door, a new person. She put new friends, um, fall weather, um, God's grace, dogs, strength and energy, family, Jesus, the ocean, the lake, fresh breezes. Um, uh, this is one of my, one I think is hilarious, Chick-fil-A sauce. <laughs> Um, fruits and veggies, miracles, simple answers, parents who love each other. That's one of my kids. Pumpkin everything, music. So anyway, kind of a fun thing to do if you're having people over. You don't have to get a big pumpkin. You could get a small pumpkin. But it's just kind of fun because the people come up with interesting things they're grateful for. And this will be our centerpiece on our Thanksgiving table. So um, that's it. That is our gratitude and simple, healthy recipes. And we're glad you're here. I'm going to stop the recording. So if you have questions, you can ask, but um, I want to keep the recording short and we will send out by, or I will email out um, at the recipes and then whoever else gets them, you can pass them on to anybody you want.